Welcome to the 2024 fall weather special. I'm Tim here. Fall is officially here. So what actually makes it fall? Well, the season kicks off every year around September 22nd or September 23rd, and that's when the autumn equinox falls. Get it? There are two moments in the year when the sun is exactly above the equator and day and night are nearly of equal length. After a relentless summer of heat and drought, finally this week, a break in the weather as the calendar turns to fall, cool air and much needed rain has arrived. Our first alert team of meteorologists have been working hard looking at the weather patterns, both past, present and future. We start our fall weather preview with Tony Cavalier and a look back at the legacy of the worst drought in half a century. A laid back Sunday for an end of summer block party in Cabo County. Residents at Timberlake in a good mood to talk about the season gone by. Beautiful day, beautiful great, people. Great food. Great food. Yeah, shrimply, shrimply delicious. But everything is not shrimp-tastic. Linda Holmes is the green thumb of the neighborhood that these days looks parched and out of sorts. Cannot tell you the last time I've seen this droughted yard this bad. We've had late August that it browned out, but I literally have not touched my yard since the first part of June. And it's just, it's a disappointment when you work so hard to have some green. But Mother Nature had other plans this year. Next stop, the magnificent tree-lined streets on the way to Central Park in Ashland. The park with its scenic pond and assortment of deciduous trees, always a favorite for visitors to enjoy. The self-proclaimed Golden Girls on Central on their choice of venues. We decided to have a picnic today instead of going into a restaurant and we picked the park because we knew it would be shady and cooler and the leaves and the trees are starting to turn and they're just beautiful. And we know we can watch the squirrels. Now, Boyd County Extension horticulturist Lori Bowling schooled us on this year's fall foliage. Turns out the long summer drought has forced the hand of Mother Nature. Going into survival mode. Um, they have a lack of water, so they can't support all of their foliage or their growth, and they're not able to manufacture food as um, frequently or as much, so they've already started to shut down. We've already seen some full leaf color on some trees. Uh, a lot of browns and yellows, which we do see more brown and yellow during dry, droughty season. We have one of the poplars. This is the tulip poplar. This is actually our state tree, but as you can see, this is one that I mentioned that is not as drought tolerant. And you can see it's dropping leaves. The leaves are turning more yellow and brown. If we get rain now at this point, if the trees have already started that shutdown process, it's probably not going to help that color any. Of course, farmers have borne the brunt of this vicious drought. At the old Central City Market in Huntington, veggies are succulent but down in numbers. By one estimate, only 25 vendors late this summer. In the good growing years, 100 farmers would have their produce and veggies on display. This is a very good patch of half runners or a good clean bean. There's no damage from insects or anything else. Cucumbers? First real good patch of cucumbers I've had all year. When it, the heat hits, it makes blooms fall off and things don't pollinate right, so it makes it difficult. You've seen few droughts in your day. Not one like this. The worst year I've ever witnessed to grow anything. The heat burnt blooms off. Years, you remember a couple of droughts in your day? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, do you remember 88 and 99? Yep. Okay. Yep. Can you they wasn't this bad. Most of the farmers who have salvaged the crop are from the Ohio bottomland, some from as far away as Gallia and Mason counties. We're on the river, so we're lucky we can water. The pumpkins are uh, not quite as large as usual, uh, and not as many of them, but uh, it's a pretty good pumpkin crop. Now an odd way to quantify the summer drought through the eyes of seafaring and land-loving Charlestonians. All Friday night, starting with Live on the Levee in May through the Sternwell Regatta July 4th weekend and the Multifest in August featured nary a drop of rain. A perfect 12 for 12 nights for outdoor concerts. Through it all, the Great Canal held its low but navigable level. Barge traffic flowing smoothly through the skillful work of the Army Corps. Jeffrey Jacquess is an engineer with the Corps. You try to maintain the pools um, at a certain level to make navigation possible. A lot of it is just all of the tributaries. There's still water coming in, even though it hasn't rained very much. They still have water in them. We still have enough to 
get barges down the river. In time, the water from the Kanawha meets up with the flow on the mighty Ohio coming downstream from Washington's Riverfront Park in Ravenswood. The mother Ohio looking more like a lake as it ambled past Harris Park in Huntington. But fall bass fishermen beware, the low water has unveiled some unsightly tree stumps. And the drought too has taken its toll on other waterways. Lake William at Barbersville City parked down several feet with a rocky shoreline. The flow in the Guyandot has slowed while the mud has come to a screeching halt, unveiling ugly rock and sandbars. Still through it all, the Droughty Falls in Boone County has maintained its luster. Okay, so the old timers, uh, they know all about these weather patterns. Um, when they say it's the worst they've really witnessed, that you have to listen to them. Tony joins us now with some perspective. And I heard you say last week that this is what it would have looked like in the Dust Bowl days of the 1930s around here. And the 30s would have been an entire decade oh, yeah, of sure. drought and heat. All the records in our part of the world across yeah. much of the eastern United States were set back during the Dust Bowl days. Mm -hmm. So we didn't set one record high temperature this wow. summer. We had two record low temperatures. Yeah. There's even three in Charleston. But stop right there. The drought, the dryness, mm -hmm. certainly would have been on a par with what we saw back in the 1930s. So it, that pattern that developed in the 1930s, do, do you think it's possible that we could be in a, a similar pattern now, especially with the way that our climate is these days? On a globally warm planet, mm -hmm. on a climate change planet, you can't blame any one year, okay. any one storm like Katrina or okay. any storm on global warming mm -hmm. or climate change. But I suspect on a climate change planet, we're going to see more events like this. I still remember Lester Holt, mm -hmm. it was last March, yeah. they, were showing a, they were showing a story that indicated the next 50 years there'd be these dreadful summers from Texas to Minnesota. Oh. And the hint was that at some point beyond the 21st century, that yeah. life in parts of the world, maybe parts of the United States, could be hard to live in. Yeah, altered. Well, this might be a snapshot of what could come right. somewhere down the road. And just like not a lot of people live in the desert per se, a lot of people may be in communities where they have to move. So. In 88-99, the drought started in springtime. That was the okay. haven. This one started so late. It started mid-June, so at least there was some moisture and some crops to be had early in the season. All right, thanks, Tony. Right, Tony. Still ahead, if you feel like fall allergy season's never-ending, you're not alone. We'll tell you more in just a few minutes.